You know, a lot of people, you know, have the ordinary passions, bowling and golf and things that, you know, most of society accept, but there's always a few people that go the extra mile and you might say, you know, find a, a hobby that's unusual and that takes a lot of time and dedication and that they find very challenging. I live for it. The off season I get stuff done. The falconry season I'm out there hunting. You get to see stuff that you don't ever see. The, the relationship that you have with the bird is something unique that you'll never find anywhere else. It's a wild animal. It means a lot. It's an experience that not a lot of people have. I mean, the, you, you can watch a bird fly, you can you can watch a bird be successful on quarry, but you don't have to be a falconer to do that. To me, falconry is the relationship with the bird and what the bird does in its natural state. The real passion and art of the, of the sport is nothing near what you would consider to be a blood sport. Yeah, they do kill. That's part of what all falcons and hawks do. But the beauty of how they do it, like a, like a cheetah chasing a gazelle, or a lion or a leopard catching an antelope and putting it up in a tree, people see that on, on TV and they have great respect for it. Well, if they really saw falconry, they'd have the same respect for it. It's an amazing sport. It's amazing to watch these birds do that. In nature, you're lucky if you ever witness that once in a lifetime. With falconry, you can train a bird to emulate this feat, and you can see it over and over again in a controlled situation. And it's almost like getting a high off of seeing the spectacular speed and adrenaline of a falcon coming out of the sky. It's, it's falconry. It's the relationship that you have with your bird, and by extension, the relationship that you and your bird have with the quarry. Falconers are more individuals. They enjoy the one-on-one -on -one experience being in the field with their birds. If I had to pick a trait that falconers share, it doesn't define them as a whole, but, but is one that they share. It is, it is a kind of fierce independence. In many respects, falconers are a throwback to another time. You will find falconers that are doctors and lawyers down to people who just live paycheck to paycheck just doing what they love to do. Getting together as a group is something we do to share ideas and to be with people who have the same passion as we do, but it's something we do rarely. But you get this group of eclectic people together for a falconry meet and we all have one common ground, and that is we love the sport of falconry. Colorado Hawking Club happens to be one of the oldest falconry clubs in the United States of America. The club is actually was the first um, state club that was organized in the United States. It was organized by a very well-known falconer, Hal Webster, back in, I think it was 1961. It's a, it's a mechanism, a group, an, an organization that, en that enables people with a common interest to come together and explore that interest and at the same time hopefully get better at, at what we believe is both a passion and an art. I mean there are, there are all kinds of people out there who, who misunderstand falconry. You can't really be against predation and a falconer, what he has really done, his only crime is taking a bird of prey and working with it so that it will hunt in his presence. The biggest threat to falconry is not a lack of falconers, it's a lack of places to fly your birds. I hate to see people lose an interest in nature, but I think in today's world, especially as, as population grows, we get more removed from being out and seeing what a real, true uh, wilderness environment is like, and people grow up in cities and they lose an interest in it. 
So I think so I see falconry as being a sport that, uh, even though it's the oldest field sport known to man, I see it as a sport that's dying out today. As metropolitan areas such as Denver expand and expand and expand, habitat for the prey species decreases. When I started flying birds of prey 15, 18 years ago, there were places in the metropolitan area that, that you could fly jackrabbits, you could fly cottontails, that are concrete today. You know, wow, a lot of people say that it, it's a dying sport. Um, is it a dying sport? It's hard to... There's not the land to hunt on that there used to be. It's just, it's getting more and more difficult to become a falconer and to practice it. Um, properly. Sport's older. Um, there aren't as many young falconers as we would like to see. It's just aging, and that's a concern. It's a sport that takes a lot of dedication, a lot of time, commitment. However, anybody who's interested in it, I would highly encourage them to come out and learn more about it. Falconry is a hard thing to do. And a lot of people have an interest in it, but in today's world, it's so easy for people to change their interests to something that might be easier. Before recorded history, there were falconers, and there are still falconers today. Now, it's an extremely small fraternity today, but the sport will persist. It's not, it's not going to die.